Hello, it's Mark here from Excel Off The Grid. In this video, we're looking at how we can reference other steps with inside Power Query. What normally happens is that each time we add a step, it's added to the Applied Steps window, and that step references the previous step. Let me show you. So here I have my source. My source is referencing to a table on an Excel workbook. We then use the changed type transformation and you'll see that this references the source step. If I were to add another step by clicking value, I'm going to transform and statistics and sum, for example, that then creates a step called calculated sum, and this references the changed type step, which was previously in our applied steps window. So we get used to seeing this method of steps being applied one after the other, but it doesn't have to be the case. So let's say in our scenario, we want to calculate how much each of these values is as a percentage of the total. So first of all, I'm gonna click my value column again, go to transform, come across to statistics, and then sum. So that's calculated, a calculated sum column, which gives me a total of 310. Now I need to get my table back as it was at the end of the changed type step. So to do that, I'm going to click on the FX. Now it thinks I want to reference the previous step called calculated sum, which isn't the case. So let me select that text in there. And I'll start typing change to type. I'll come up, I'll select that. And then as soon as I press return, it will then give me the table as it existed at the end of the change to type step. So calculated sum, and then reference back to the change to type step. Now from here, I can add a column, so column, add column, calculated column. This then brings up the calculated column dialog box. I'm gonna call this percentage of total. So in here, I can just put on the, the value divided by, now my total was calculated in the calculated sum step. So put a hash equals calculated sum. Now, because that uh, calculated sum was drilled down to a single value, it means we can use it in this way. I'll then click OK. It calculates the percentage. Let's just change the type on that to be a percentage. There we go, perfect. We've now calculated the percentage of the total. And you'll notice that at several points, we have jumped steps. So our calculated sum was based on the change type, but the custom one step jumped the calculated sum to go back to the change type. When we used our added custom, we actually referenced the calculated sum step, which was two steps back. Now the interesting thing is that we don't just have to reference steps that happen previously. We can reference steps that are happening in the future. Let me give you an example by going into the advanced editor. So here I have my calculated sum. Just gonna cut that text and then move it down here. So it's now below my added custom. The final step is then change type, and then that's the change type which is returned. I'll click done on that. And as you can see, there's no change whatsoever to our calculation. The steps have changed, we've got our change type. We've then got our custom which references our change type, which is now pointless, so we can delete that. I've then got my added custom column, which is the value divided by the calculated sum, but the calculated sum doesn't come until the following step. And then finally, we apply a changed type. So this means in this way, we can reference any steps we like with inside our query. If you remember back to a previous video where we looked at how we can reference items by position, if we add in this concept of being able to reference any step we like, we can actually optimize that query. So that's what we're going to do. So if you remember back to this scenario, what we wanted was to tidy up this data and then have a column that just had the reporting date on it. So with our new understanding of how we can reference other steps, let's see how we can optimize this transformation. To start with, I want to remove the top four rows. So from home, remove rows, 
remove top rows, and enter a four, and then click OK. Then I want to use the first row as headers. OK, it's all looking good so far. Now from the navigation step, we want column one and row three. Now because Power Query starts counting from zero, it's actually row number two. If I come to my advanced editor, as is often the case with the navigation step, that's not actually the name of the step as Power Query thinks about it. So Power Query thinks this is called TB underscore sheet. Click done on that. I then come to my promoted headers, go to add column, custom column. Let's call this month and date. Hash and double quotes. I'll paste them over my sheet. Now I'll open a square bracket. It will try and retrieve the columns that exist at present with on our table. But we don't want that. We want column one as existed when we had the navigation step. And we wanted record number two. Then click OK. So that's now added a month end date for each one of our rows. So let's finish off this transformation. So the transform, extract after delimiter. My delimiter is as at space. OK. Perfect. And now we can select all of these. Go to detect data type. Just check that these are OK. So account code, I want this text. Account is text. Value is a decimal number. We could change that to be a currency. And then month and date, it has recognized as a date. So that's brilliant. That's exactly what we wanted and much more efficient than we had in the previous video. Well, that's all for this video. We've seen that we can reference other steps with Inside Power Query. They can be previous steps, but they can also be future steps. So that means we can optimize our code in new ways. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to make sure you get future videos. And I'll catch you next time. <music>